Hello everyone. How are you all doing? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday chats with Nim. How is everybody doing? How's your Sunday been so far? Has it been fun? Has it been busy? Has it been lazy? You've got to pick one option. Hi, Reshma. Hi, Ashwin. Have you been to Fiji? I haven't been to Fiji. Is that where you're based, Ashwin? I would love to come to Fiji someday. It's definitely on my bucket list. And I've heard lots and lots of wonderful things about it. So uh, definitely someday. Hi, Anirith. Lovely to have you all on board. So today we're doing something a little different. Hi, Divya. Today we're doing something different. I'm not actually speaking on one particular topic. We're going to have a very relaxed Sunday with each other. It's going to be a Q&A session. So um, if there's been any question that uh, you've been thinking of asking me in one of my sessions or in general, then feel free to type that out in the comments today. And uh, I will try and answer it to the best of my ability. I also have a list of questions that I have put together based on emails and messages that I've received from people over the past several months. So I have put together a list. Uh, these questions, the reason I picked them out today is because they're sort of universal questions and I'm hoping that uh, whoever has asked me those questions is listening in, but that also uh, because the issues are so universal that a lot more people who are listening will also benefit from them. Radha says she's been very creative today. Radha, that is fantastic. Um, creativity is uh, one of the most therapeutic things. It's a great way to relax. So I am glad you've been creative. And uh, Abhi has already come up with a question, which is fantastic. How do you stay positive, especially when things are not going as planned? Abhi, that is a great question. And uh, well, one that I have to talk about almost on a daily basis uh, with my clients, with my, in my workshops, in my coaching sessions, and of course, even to myself. Because um, staying positive is not something that comes easy to most people. And I'm not saying that it comes easy to me either. It is a lot of hard work. But once you realize how to do it, uh, it becomes progressively easier. So when things are not going as planned, it's a bit of a vicious circle. You may have heard me talk quite often about the law of manifestation. The law of manifestation is whatever we think about repeatedly eventually becomes true. Now, first of all, I'd encourage everyone to uh, not have any sense of entitlement about what life owes us or what the universe owes us. I wrote an article, uh, Abhi, just a couple of days ago, that life is not fair. And the sooner we accept that, the sooner we st uh, stop fighting the fact that life is not fair, the easier it is for us to become proactive rather than reactive. Okay. So when things don't go according to plan, typically what happens is we sort of go into depression, we feel a bit low, we feel defeated, and all these negative thoughts start coming into our mind. Now, when we only focus on the negative things, that's the vibe we're sending out into the universe. And whatever vibe we're sending out in the universe bounces back and comes back to us. So if you're putting out negativity, negativity will come back to you in some form or shape. Have you ever noticed that sometimes you might wake up in the morning and you um, hit your toe against the bed rest and everything after that is downhill. Everything goes wrong through the rest of the day. That is because that first initial pain in the morning puts you in a negative mood, puts you in a bad mood. Um, you, we might swear a little bit, we might curse something. And then, because we've already got into that negative mood, the rest of the day, those negative vibes are going out and more and more negative things keep happening. That's why we all have days where everything goes wrong. So, Abhi, the short answer to your question is, when you realize that what is being sent out, the vibes 
that are being sent out are going to come back to you multiple fold. It becomes a lot easier to put things into perspective. And I always tell myself, oh my goodness, if I've been thinking negative, then negative things are going to happen more and more. So uh, get into the practice of replacing any negative thought you might have with a positive one, knowing fully well that if you only focus on positive thoughts, positive things will happen in the long run. Initially, you might just have to pretend that you're thinking positive, but the more you do it slowly, you will be filled with genuine positivity. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit, Abhi. Hi Priya, welcome aboard. Radha has a question. Radha, let me read out your question. How do I face a negative effect from the market on my important thing that should have been gone through long ago? Feel I am wrong in approaching it. Okay. Radha, you might have to... See, that's the trouble with written uh, questions. Sometimes, uh, you know, when you're face-to-face -face and we're talking verbally, it's a lot easier to explain things, but I haven't quite caught the question or the essence of your question correctly. Radha, do you mind uh, explaining it a little more or expanding it a little more? When you say negative effect from the market on an important thing that should have gone through a long ago, are you talking about your colleagues? Are you talking about a project? I'm not quite sure. So before I answer it, if you're able to expand just a little bit, that'll be awesome. And I will definitely try my best to answer it. So for those who've only just logged on, welcome everyone to Sunday Chats with Nim. Today we are having a fun Sunday afternoon. Uh, it is a little past four here in Sydney. The sun is shining and I thought uh, instead of talking about one single topic today like I do every week, today is just a general Q&A. So if you have any question about any topic under the sun that you may have wanted to ask me, uh, please do so. Just type it out in the comments and I will do my best to answer it. I have also put together a list of questions that people have emailed me over the months. And if I'm not able to, if your question that you may have messaged me a while ago is not in today's selection, please forgive me. It's because I had um, so many queries from so many people uh, that I could only pick out a few for today's session. So continue asking your questions. It doesn't have to be any spe about any specific topic. It could be professional uh, related question. It could be a personal question uh, related to self-confidence, uh, related to self-doubt, decision making, anything, anything under the sun. Let's talk. And uh, today is all about you. So if you have a question, don't feel shy. Like I always say, there's no right, no wrong answer. And if I can't answer it, I will let you know and I will come back to you with an answer when I find out more about it. But to the best of my ability, I will definitely answer it. Hi Vandana from Perth, how are you doing? Is the sun shining in Perth as well, like it is here in Sydney? Okay, so I do have some questions ready, but please ask your questions uh, as well because it's more fun to answer the live questions but I will go through uh, some of the questions I've put together as well. So one question that one lady wrote to me, and it was very, very honest of her to write that. She wrote, Nim, I often feel jealous of other people's success, and that makes me feel frustrated and as though they have all the luck and I don't. How do I combat that? Okay, so the question she has asked me is, Nim, I often feel jealous of other people's success and that makes me feel frustrated and as though they have all the luck and I don't. How do I combat that? Well, thank you for that question. As you all know, all these questions are anonymous. I do not take uh, the names or details of the people who send me these questions because they're all confidential. Uh, but uh, the questions are universal. So I'm sure whoever has asked me this question is not alone in this dilemma because many, many more people, whether they admit it to themselves or not, would have faced a similar situation at some point in their life where they may have felt jealous or envious of other people's success. So how do you handle jealousy? Now, jealousy, first of all, is not something that you need to be ashamed of. It is a very, very normal human emotion. 
So I have gone live again. I'm not quite sure what happened with the previous video, but uh, that's technology for you. <laughs> Hi, Devya, can you hear me now? Because um, I'm not sure what happened with the previous video. It said uh, it just vanished. Can you hear me? Is the audio okay guys? Can someone let me know? Because if it's not, then I'll have to start it all over again. Can you hear me? Hello? Don't you just love technology? Yes, now it's <laughs> Thank you for letting me know, guys. I, I don't even know how long I was talking and uh, fully engrossed in my own voice, and it probably wasn't even on, so I'm not sure how much of it you missed, but I have shared the... <laughs> oh, this is too funny. I have shared the previous uh, video, so hopefully um, you'll find the recorded version on my timeline, and hopefully you'll uh, hear at least a part of the answers that I was uh, giving. So I think the last question I answered uh, was for Radha. So Radha, hopefully, if you're still around, uh, you would have heard it. Uh, if not, you might want to go back to the recorded version and listen to it all over again. Uh, I'm not sure what's happening with connectivity today. It doesn't seem to be the greatest, but let's soldier on. And if you can't hear me, just let me know. But until then, I'm just going to assume that all is okay. So today we're doing a general Q&A. Uh, I'm not focusing on any particular question uh, or any particular topic today. I am just taking audience questions. So if you have anything that you have wanted to ask me for a while, please do so. We have another maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I might just increase it by five minutes because uh, there was a bit of time wasted while connectivity was going on and off, etc., etc. Okay, another question that I received from one of my viewers, I'm going to read it out to you today. And like I said, um, okay, Divya said there were a lot of echoes beforehand, but now it is smooth. Okay, I'm not quite sure why, because there is no one else here except me. Me or Meri Tanhai. Remember that famous dialogue? I can't even remember who it was. Was it Amitabh Bachchan who had said it? And I can't even remember which movie it was from. I'm a huge Bollywood buff, by the way. Uh, but I can't for the life of me remember whether I've even said that dialogue correct and which movie it was from. But uh, putting that aside, I'm sure we can do another session someday about favorite Bollywood movies and favorite Bollywood dialogues. Talking about dialogues, Pushpa, I hate tears. Has anyone else heard this beautiful dialogue from Rajesh Khanna's movie, Amar Prem? one of the best dialogues and said with so much pathos and so much emotion. Um, it is a really old movie, but if you haven't watched it, you must at least once in your lifetime. Amar Prem. Vandana says it is Amitabh from Silsa. Oh, thank goodness. So a bit of trivia there for you all. So yes, I'm glad I got that right. Okay, moving along. Uh, one of my readers has sent me a question and I'm going to read it out to you now. I am terrified of making decisions nowadays. A long time ago, I made a decision that went terribly wrong, and I'm still living with the regret of having made such a foolish choice. Because of that memory, I freeze each time I have to make a decision, even if it is about something small. I worry, what if things go wrong again? Well, thank you for that question. Uh, we've all made foolish decisions in our past. We've all made foolish choices. And we all have regret in some shape or form. Uh, all of us do, right? Because we're only human. So um, if the person who's written this email is watching, then this answer is for you. And hopefully for anyone else who's listening who's also regretting maybe a decision that went wrong in the past. See, in life, 
we don't have any guarantees. I wish we did, but we do not have any guarantees. Every time we make a decision, uh, there is no guarantee that it's going to go the way we want it to, because there's always a 50% chance, right, that it'll work and a 50% chance that it will not work. Now, the first thing is, before you make any decision, I would personally, I go through the pros and I go through the cons. I go through the plus points and the negative points of that particular decision. Now, you can go through the rest of your life simply weighing the pros and cons because you're so terrified of you know, deciding on one particular decision and running with it. But you have to tell yourself that after a point, once you've thought about it as much as possible, it is time to make that decision. So you really have to grit your teeth and make it. Now there is a 50% chance that it will go wrong. So whoever wrote me that email, of course, that decision, I'm sure that she paid a lot of attention to the pros and cons before making that decision. But unfortunately, like I said before, life is not always fair and things did not go the way she wanted them to go. And because of that, nowadays she is terrified of making a decision. What if it goes wrong all over again? like that last time. Of course, it could go wrong again. Of course it could, because that's just how life works. But we cannot go through our entire life crippled by fear just because something may go wrong. What we need to focus on is not what if it goes wrong, but what if it goes right. It's the law of averages. It is impossible that every single decision you make, you're going to stuff up. It's impossible. The law of averages will not allow it. So you simply must have faith that whatever decision you take will work out in the long run. We don't always see the results immediately. We don't always see the sense in it immediately, but down the track, it will all make sense. And I actually, coincidentally, have a beautiful quote here that I want to share with you. And, uh, and I think that might help you put things into perspective. So this quote, I'm not sure who wrote it, but it's so beautiful. And uh, that is, someday, everything will make perfect sense. So for now, laugh at the confusion smile through the tears, and keep reminding yourself that everything happens for a reason. So even if a decision or two or three in the past have gone wrong, the next time you have to make a decision, if you have thought carefully about the plus points and the minus points, all you have to do is send out the right vibes to the universe. Believe with your complete being that it will be okay, that your decision will turn out right. Because like I always say, the universe is listening. The universe is observing. Very quietly, you don't even see it, but it, the forces around you are listening to what you're putting out there. So make a decision, go in with the full faith that it will turn out to be the right decision. Because sometimes we are so worried that the decision is going to go wrong that that's all we focus on. So we only send out negative energy. And when it does turn out to be wrong, we say, see, I knew it. So as much as possible, remember that what you're putting out in the universe is bouncing back to you. So next time you make a decision, go in unafraid. Things may go wrong, of course, but there is an equal chance that it'll go right. And that is what you need to focus on. Hi, Elva. Hi, Priya. Glad it's much needed motivation. We all need motivation. I do too. And I wrote this post this morning. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to read it, where I thanked you all because I have days where I feel low and I have days where I feel completely unmotivated. And uh, just reading all the feedback you all write to me, all the wonderful kind things you say to me through your messages, through your comments, those cheer me up and those give me uh, the motivation to continue adding value to you all every single day. So thank you all for all that. Um, how much time do we have? Okay, so we've got another maybe seven minutes. Today is a general Q&A session. I'm not talking about any specific topic, but if you have a question for me, please type it out in the comments and I will do my best to answer it. I've also put together some questions that some others, some other readers and viewers have 
sent to me and I'm just going through some of those. If you don't have a question, then I'll just read maybe a couple of them that I've collected from the emails I've received. Okay. Priya said you read my post. Thank you, Priya. Okay, now this is an interesting question I received. So this person wrote to me and said, uh, Nim, my friend, listen to this, my friend recently had a get-together party and I saw the photos on Facebook. Uh oh and she did not invite me. I feel so hurt. Honestly, social media can do so much damage to so many relationships, right? Now, I'm sure many of us have seen photos on Facebook of these great fun parties to which we were not invited. And of course, we feel hurt and we feel insulted and we feel betrayed, etc., etc. So I'll read this question out again. Uh, again. Nim, my friend recently had a get together party. I saw the photos on Facebook and she did not invite me. I feel so hurt. Okay, so hopefully the person who's asked me this question is watching today or hopefully will see the recorded version later. Firstly, feeling hurt is understandable. It is a normal human emotion because we all want to feel included. We all want to feel uh, that we have everyone's approval, that we're very popular, that everyone loves us. We all want to be invited to everything. And then when we see photos on social media of events where we were not invited, I understand why you may have felt a little hurt. But the thing I would like you to remember is that sometimes people are in the mood to catch up with certain people. Just because they did not feel like catching up with you on that particular day does not mean that they hate you or that they find your company boring. It just means that on that particular day for that particular get together, they just wanted to invite X, Y and Z. Maybe because X, Y, and Z uh, have a lot in common. Maybe because X, Y, and Z are people that they have not met in a long time. And because of that, they're looking forward to having just a cozy little get together with them. So it is okay for your friends to have catch ups without you. Okay, I know this is shocking, but hear me out. It is perfectly okay for your friends to have people over and not include you, okay? Because they might just want to meet those people and not have you there. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means that for that particular evening, they just want to meet so-and-so, and that's okay. So I think we need to give our friends a little bit more space, a little bit more freedom, and uh, instead of worrying about where we were not invited, just treasure the moments that you do have together with your friend. And if it is really, really playing on your mind, if it, and if you're really feeling as though the whole world was invited and you were left out, it could have been a genuine uh, oversight. Maybe they genuinely forgot to invite you and then didn't want to insult you by inviting you last minute. Or there might have been a more malicious reasons, I'm not sure. But if it is playing on your mind and giving you sleepless nights, then I suggest you go and ask that person outright in a polite manner, hey, I saw these photos and I was a bit disappointed you didn't include me. By all means, that's the only way you will find out where you stand with the other person who you think is your friend. But the bottom line is I think we really need to give our friends a bit more leeway and allow them to explore new friendships, allow them to uh, meet different people and you know sometimes people don't invite too many people because of lack of space or a lack of catering ability I mean if they want to meet say three or four families and that's all that they can hold in their house then they might decide not to invite you for that particular event and that's perfectly okay so we need to stop being um, so offended or so hurt by uh, friendships and you know I think we're putting a lot of pressure on our friends to uh, behave in a certain way, uh, certain way. So it is okay for you not to be invited to some parties. It does not make you a bad person and it certainly does not make them a bad friend. Hi Nagarada, how are you? So does anyone else have any question before I sign off? So like I said, today was a general Q&A and I'm sorry there was a bit of a technical glitch earlier where uh, it just vanished. 
So hopefully whatever I was speaking has got uh, recorded. But I hope you've enjoyed the Q&A. And if you haven't had a chance to ask me a question in today's live session, I will probably do another Q&A session um, sometime in the near future. So keep your questions ready uh, so that we can have a nice chit chat and a nice exchange of ideas. Okay, so hopefully you have a fantastic week ahead. Uh, one thing I'm going to ask you all to do, if possible, is take five or ten minutes tonight to write a gratitude journal. Okay, I have done a session about this or a video about this a long time ago about writing in a gratitude journal. It is a practice that I have been doing for a long time. So every night before you go to bed, you know, write in a little notebook three things that happened during the day for which you are truly grateful. They don't have to be earth shatteringly big events or big happenings, just any three things, however small. Maybe you managed to have a cup of coffee in peace without anyone interrupting. Maybe you found a $5 note in your pocket uh, when you were going through your clothes, $5 that you didn't know you had. Maybe you opened your wardrobe and discovered this beautiful top still with the label on that you had forgotten you had bought. Fantastic, cause for celebration. So little joys, make a note of that because it is one of the best ways to stay positive. So I know someone had asked me a question right at the beginning of the session is how to stay positive. When we start looking at what we already have, the blessings that we already have, it is so much easier to stay positive. Because imagine if you didn't have what you have today, how much worse would life be, right? So thank you everyone, love you all, and thank you for asking your questions and for making this Sunday afternoon so much fun for me and for making it so interactive. Have a fantastic week ahead. I will see you next Sunday. Bye for now. Mwah. Hold on, Priya, I'm gonna quickly read your message. Thank you, name Shirley will write gratitude and love you. Oh, thank you, Priya, do that. I'm sure it will be a fantastic practice moving forward. Do that as much as possible every single day of the week. Even if you don't have time, just very quickly, bullet points, two or three points every night, three things that you're grateful for. Fantastic. Bye for now, guys. See you next week.